few people appointed me appointed me to this because they know I'm a Tulsi Gabbard fan, and I'll I'll get to why that's pertaining to Tulsi in just a moment. Uh, but Unity 2020, Unity 2020. Uh, basically, this is like what people assumed the movement for a People's Party was doing, is that they were trying to run an alternative candidate uh, against the Democratic Party, um, because you know, fuck the Democratic Party. And I'm not saying that facetiously. I'm saying that as seriously as that. Fuck the Democratic Party. Uh, fuck the Republican Party. Fuck the duopoly. Like, I don't think like, this is not. Um, so a lot of people have been trying to come up with alternatives to the electoral politics, alternatives to this duopoly that we are in. Um, and that's all fine and good. But here, this is part of the reason uh, I'm going to go through what the background of what the, you know, this article for Unity 2020 is, is talking about and then a couple of issues that I have with it. And, you know, I, what, again, like uh, this is not a 100% foolproof strategy, but something that could be done to maybe get, uh, you know, uh, a unity candidate, a unity 2020 candidate, or, or I guess just a unity candidate uh, on the ballots in 2024 or 2022. Um Because I do think that there is a way to do it. It's just you have to kind of play the game to not play the game. Electoral politics is weird in that way, um, where you you have to be within it in order to break out of it. Um, You can't break out of it from. It's it's complicated. I I think I I think some of you might not understand what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, so the part of the thing that the Unity people point out is how ineffective the two-party system is, right? The two-party system is all about blaming the other side uh, for why things aren't getting done rather than trying to, like, work together to to achieve uh, a mutual goal or or just the goal of being a functioning government, Um, which I don't think the America... Like, America has a functioning government right now. I think they have a performative government um, that, that wants to say nice things instead of actually do and put any action behind what they're talking about so uh, and and, you know a lot of what they point out the reason why they're ineffective is because the government is supposed to represent the people it's supposed to take care of its people when the people can't take care of themselves when large crises happen and I think you know a lot of people have been saying this for years um, you know is that a government controlled by corporate interests by greed and by profit is eventually going to be a failed state. And we saw the workings of that over the last, you know, 10, 15 years. Um, at, at minimum, it's, it's been going on for a long time. I mean, this is decades and decades of neoliberal policies, neoconservative policies uh, coming together to ensure, you know, which version of greed is it going to be? Is it going to be the pick yourself up by your bootstraps greed? Or is it going to be the greed that comes wrapped in a Black Lives Matter and a rainbow flag? Um, you know, to, to preserve appearances. Uh, so it'll commodify identity politics, put, put a price tag on identity politics, uh, sell merchandise with it. That's which version of that is going to be. So one of the things they point out is right now, the way that American politics has been running is that it's polarized. Um, it's, it's, it's heading us to uh, you know, the, this second civil war type situation, which, hey, wasn't Joe Biden supposed to fix all that? What didn't, didn't a lot of liberals say like, oh man, we're approaching a, a second civil war because of Trump and his rhetoric and da, 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 da. But if Biden gets elected, all of that will be, all of that will be fine. People will, people will finally be able to breathe and come together, uh, unified under a president that's all about unification. Uh, and here we are, I still see a bunch of people like talking about the potential of a civil war. And and again, like it is still a possibility that a civil war will fucking happen. Uh, Very much a possibility. Uh, You know, like you do have these pro Trumpers that are brandishing guns and capital steps and the cops ain't doing nothing to, to stop them or, or any such thing. And you have pro like nonviolent protests that are becoming violent because of police interference. And, you know, it's like the cops are siding with militia and that, and now there's people on the left that are getting scared. So they're arming themselves and, 
uh, you know, so, and then you also have cops that are like supporting white supremacists and have white supremacists within their organization. Uh, but again, it's like the Biden presidency isn't going to solve that. I think the Biden presidency is going to uh, make it worse because here's the thing what's done is done. There's been a polarization of America, and Donald Trump is one of the factors that led to it. But the other factor that led to it was basically the Democratic Party failing the people that it's supposed to represent. Supposedly, supposedly they're supposed to represent. Um, Nancy Pelosi making performative shit like ripping up Donald Trump's State of the Union speech and giving him, you know, a sardonic fucking clapper. Uh, Chuck Schumer making some kind of vapid fucking platitude statement over nothing when, you, you know, it's like the candidate that represents your party at its utmost is a vile racist piece of shit. And his VP candidate is also a vile individual that has put so many people behind bars. So, really what people need to realize is that it becomes an oligarchy, uh, an issue between the oligarchy and the proletariat, right? Like, those are the words I'm going to use because that's what it is. Uh, it's a class war. That's all it really is. And, and the problem is that people haven't realized that yet because people don't understand American history or American politics. Uh, they understand performance, and that's part of what politics is, is, is that it's a performance. Um, by the way, no one should be clamoring and excited about a fucking civil war. FYI. Uh, that is a bad thing for everybody. You should not be excited that that is a thing that could fucking happen. All right. Uh... They also point out something that I don't think a lot of people talk about, which is the correlation of legislation. Uh, basically, what that means, because I just said a bunch of gobbledygook uh, to some people, <laughs> right? What that means is there is a direct correlation between corporate interest and what gets legislated. So the more something, the, the more like the corporate oligarchs want something to happen, the more likely it is to happen. The more the people want something to happen, uh, the likelihood just doesn't stay the same. It's a flat line, right? Uh, you know, so uh, if people want um, Medicare for all, which is something that people do want, uh, the likelihood of Congress making a legislation to approve Medicare for all will stay the same if people never said anything about Medicare for all at all. It stays about the same. But the likelihood that Medicare for All will become a platform that will be denied by Congress and a political party and so on and so forth uh, is directly correlated to whether corporate interests want Medicare for All or not. So the pharmaceutical industries don't want Medicare for All, so the parties will take a bold stance against Medicare for All. And this includes Democrats and the Republicans. The Democrats have come out and made that statement very clear that they are not for Medicare for All. So you have that. You have that going on. Uh, so what this thing comes out and says is that we need, we need elect, elected officials that um, represent the full breadth of uh, the American political landscape because the American political landscape is not all Democrats and Republicans. Um, not even close, but, but we're forced into playing that game where... It is either Democrat or Republican, black or white, hot or cold, you know. So uh, there's very, very few issues where it is this or that. So what the Unity 2020 folks have presented, and by the way, they already had their primaries and, and tried to get ballot access and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I will get into that in just a moment here. But what, what the Unity 2020 people are talking about is having a center left and a center right person run together. Uh, that would be the ticket, right, in a, in, in a traditional sense. It would be the president and vice presidential ticket. Uh, and the way that they would pick this person is, are they patriotic, are they capable, and are they courageous? Those are the terms that they are going by. Uh, and they want to base a party off of cooperation. And what they say is called necessary compromise. Those are the things that they stand for, right? So basically what we've outlined so far is where they're coming from 
and what they're looking for in a candidate. And this is all nice and good, but here's the problem. This does sound, this is very much sounds like centrism because you're center right, center right, center left. Uh, you know, the, the logical centrist kind of, you know, the moderates kind of uh, appearance to it. But the things that America wants are not center right, center left. Uh, they are progressive. They are, they are what I believe is logical. Um, and it can be done with a competent government in place. Uh, we have not had a competent government in place because America's government is a p- political performative farce. Uh, center right, center left. Let's look at some of the things that people do want. People want Medicare for all. People wanted to fund the police. People want their student lo- uh, loans canceled. They want uh, rents canceled. They want debts canceled. Um, the, the last couple, last two or three are basically specifically during this pandemic. Uh, but if you're going to bail out the banks and give them a bunch of tax breaks and all that kind of shit, then you know what? I feel like they have enough money um, and they don't need my fucking monthly payment uh, or, or anybody else's. They, they can forgive a couple of the debts uh, and let people live their lives with the, with the things that they need. Uh, we want less wars. We want, uh, did I mention defunding the police? Yeah, this is all the things that they want. These are progressive policies. These are socialist ideologies, right? These are common sense type things. Logical issues. They're, and, and, this is, and that's not what centrism is about, right? Uh, they talk about compromise. And the question should be, who is being compromised? Who is the compromise benefiting? Because so far, American politics has compromised, and it's compromised on the behalf of people, the behalf of the American people. And that really sucks. And I think a lot of people are sick and tired of that. It's what pulls people away from politics. It's what makes politics so toxic. Um, is, 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 you know, the, the validation of these compromises against the people. And what I think we need to do now is compromise what the, the interests of corporations, the interests of the oligarchs. They've had their turn in the sun. They've, they've had too much of it. And, and you know, if, if the electoral political landscape isn't going to shift in that direction, then the people will shift it in that direction. It's historically how it's happened all the time. Um... People will take to the streets, they will organize, they will march, they will amplify, uh, they will educate themselves, and, uh, and they will push politics further to, the, f- further, further to where it needs to be, which is over, or a little further to the left. That's what benefits people. I talk about patriotism, and I mean, that, that has been code for nationalism. That's been code for you know, America first, right? Like, we're better than all the other countries. MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. Like, that's that's what it's become. I mean, and under patriotism, like, being a socialist is treasonous. When re- in reality, being a socialist just means that you want best for your, your, your fellow citizens. You think outside of yourself. Patriotism doesn't allow that. Patriotism makes your identity your country, your identity your borders the fake invisible lines that we live within. It forms tribalism. So I don't know if that's particularly the greatest interest. You should have somebody that is courageous and you should have somebody that is bold enough to criticize the way that your country has been operating, to criticize the status quo, to go against your own parties, to go against the people that that you you consider a part of your tribe to sit there and say, wait a minute, I don't think our tribe is doing the right thing right now. I think this moral superiority and smugness is not good. That is courageous. Capability, yeah, okay, we should probably be looking for some younger folks, right? Uh, maybe bump down the fucking age to 30 to and go from like 30 to 65. What? the last couple of elections we've had to vote for, you know, we went from voting for someone younger and idealistic who ended up being a neoliberal shill, Obama, to a 70-year-old man. 
to another 70 year old like are we just that's not how this is supposed to fucking go so yeah put an age limit make sure they're capable Donald Trump isn't fucking capable he's he's a, got a bevy of mental health issues uh, Joe Biden not capable absolutely fucking not capable dude has dementia his brain is failing and they keep hiding that fact and if you talk about it they'll try to censor you about it and they'll try to call you all these names and so on and so forth but it's like you're just gonna escape reality like you're just gonna be like no that's not a reality I wanna face I'm just gonna ignore it like the fact that we had two mentally unfit candidates running against each other to be the leader of an entire nation should tell you how much of a fucking failed state this 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 government system is this election system is and nobody should have been willing to participate in it unless they got more ca- more more parties involved and better candidates to vote for anyway um so yeah okay so, uh, the other issue that I have is ballot access, right? So, the Unit 20, Unity 2020 means that you would have to spend uh, the remainder of the few months that you have trying to get ballot access in 50 different states in order to actually get the amount of votes that you get. And this is one of those things that people always chastise the third parties, right? Libertarians, independents, Green Party, what have you. They're like, oh, but you guys never get anything more than, you know, maximum of 3%. And that's, well, well why is that? Well, that's because they don't have the ballot access. They don't have all of the tools that the Democrats and the Republicans have to to market and get their word out. So if they're only in a handful of states, if they're only in one third of the states and they get 3% of the votes, you know, they could easily get 10, 15, 20% of the votes and get federal funding for a bunch of shit if they were allowed to get ballot access so that's a major challenge which which by the way the unity 2020 people did not get um because they had their primary with ranked choice voting in august uh and the two people that they chose were chelsea gabbard and dan crenshaw now i think if you watch my channel enough that you know that i'm a, I'm a Tulsi gabbard fan I, although i like her what she represents in her ideologies i am disappointed in her as a politician uh, because she turned out to just be bogus like all of the other politicians. And uh, as as much as I didn't have the fervor to go at, like, to hate her as much as some other people did, and that's fine if, 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 if you were one of the people that did dislike her to the degree that, you know, some people did. I know Graham Elwood went, went off and Jimmy Dore tried and Ron Placone was pretty disappointed. I mean, everybody that really looked at Tulsi as a, as a progressive voice of... Uh, uh, against American imperialism was. Uh, But, you know, I I think what she represents is on point. And it was really nice to see a a, a, a candidate that uh, represented what I believed in. Um, Same thing with Bernie Sanders, right? So Tulsi was chosen. And Dan Crenshaw is a Republican. And again, I'm not familiar with Dan Crenshaw... Uh, the only thing that I think uh, I, I have recollection of with Dan Crenshaw is, I can't, what's that comedian's name? He had a really fucking terrible special on Netflix. Uh, young kid from fucking SNL. Why am I blanking on his name? If you remember his name, leave a comment. Leave a comment about this guy. But he had a stand-up special. It's not very good. But he basically takes claim for making Dan Crenshaw famous. Um, but I think Crenshaw had his own fame before this kid made him famous on SNL. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I know he's a Republican, and, and, but I don't know much else about this guy. Uh, for me to make a particular statement about him, of, of liking him or disliking him. Uh, but those were the two that were chosen, particularly... Um, particularly because they fit the bill in ranked choice voting, and that's how it happened. Um, now, I think 2020 was a little short-sighted 
because the second Biden's nomination was in place, it was very clear, like, okay, I don't really have a dog in this race, right? I don't have a political political candidate in this race. And uh, my voice it becomes inapplicable because I'm not going to... I'm not going to talk within the little specified boxes that the establishment has put into place. What I think the unity people should do in order to get ballot access, in order to get viable candidates, is look at 2022 for lower, you know, down ballot uh, replacements. Um, Look at what MPP is doing. And... Get, find a good presidential candidate for 2024. I mean, it could be Tulsi Gabbard. But the the electoral system, I mean, what really needs to happen, and Movement for a People's Party is doing this, is building um, a grassroots network. I mean, there's millions and millions of people that are turning on to Movement for a People's Party. You got Cornell West, Nina Turner, uh, Graham Elwood, Ryan Knight, you, you, you know, and, and I've had Nick Brenna on my podcast a couple times. I've talked about Movement for a People's Party quite a few times, numerous times, right? Uh, I, I like what they're about. I like what they're doing. Um, solid folks. But Unity could do something with that. They could take the same amount of fervor and excitement surrounding a political party uh, and surrounding electoral politics and do something with it. And I think that's what they should aim for. And I'm not saying this in a way to be like, oh man, fucking MPP, look out, guys. No, I'm, I'm saying this like, yeah, Movement for a People's Party is, is one of the options. And they're more of a socialist labor kind of party, which is what we need. We need a party that is representative of labor and we need an electoral system that doesn't just have us pick you know, fucking political puppets to go up and be like, I hope they represent the thing. No, I think the the whole thing should be transformed to the point where we should be talking about uh, people voting on legislation. And it should be easy to read. It shouldn't have all this fucking legalese. It should be easy to understand, easy to read. No fucking loophole sh- bullshit. And the people should vote on those things. That's what I think a democracy should be. That's what I think America should do. And I'll talk more about that idea um, because there is somebody that's actually written about it and talked about it a lot more in depth. Um, And and I'm going to talk about that later this week. Uh, But, you know, that's where we need to go. We need to have more parties. the Green Party should have ballot access. The Libertarians, the People's Party, this Unity Party, they should all have ballot access. And they should all be able to get on the debate stage. And they should all have uh, mainstream access. I mean, honestly, at this point, with the way, if, if the momentum continues to grow, a move for People's Party is not really going to need mainstream access. They'll just push for ballot access. And if the Democrats have a problem with that, then the Democrats come out looking like assholes that don't want progressives on the ballot because they're scared that the progressives are going to take votes away from them because the progressives are actually going to fucking stand for what the people actually fucking want. Meaning in the middle, this is part of the reason why I'm, I'm not fully on board with this, this unity party, though I think they should get ballot access. Though I think they should exist as a political party and they should run a good candidate because it'll be a better alternative than the duopoly that's in place. Um, Meaning in the middle, this talk about patriotism uh, usually winds up leaving people behind because these ideas get co-opted. And unless you make a very specific thing to say necessary compromise meaning we are going to compromise the benefits and rights of the uh, corporate oligarchs and not give them that many powers and restrain them and make sure that they are going to do the socially responsible thing, the morally right thing to do, uh, instead of be driven by greed and profit and all this other stuff, uh, then, then yes, this compromise idea is going to work. 
what we really need is a major re-education process in America. A lot of people don't know uh, their own history. A lot of people don't understand uh, why things are the way they are. Uh, and when you point them out, when you talk about it, and when you when you point out how this two-party system has really failed and why both parties are the bad guys here and why America itself, with its empirism, its uh, militarism, its, its imperialism, uh, that it, uh, you know, enforces both at home and abroad, we're not the fucking good guys in this situation either. Um, it's, it's rejected. It's put out into the fringes. People say, well, this is not the time for that. Things like that. Uh, and those are uh, very harmful in stopping all of this kind of stuff. But I do think that we need more parties and a major re-education in, uh, in America. Just not even re-education, just education. Just people to learn their own fucking history. By the way, there's plenty of stuff on this channel where you can dig into American history. I've talked about a bunch of stuff that isn't talked about in mainstream media or mainstream education. So, uh, yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.